times. Chairman, sir, thank you very much. We've had a short duration discussion, but I think quite a lot of uh, members, many of them have given us their valuable inputs on what they think of the white paper and its contents. So giving a very brief uh, introduction to my speech, my reply, not really getting into too much of a detail which is there in the white paper itself, because it's uh, been laid in both the houses and I've given a fairly elaborate reply in Lok Sabha and also a fairly elaborate opening statement there, but I still would get into some details, but not too many. I understand the delay or the time that we need to conserve because you have one more uh, discussion to take place. So the economy in 2014, which we inherited, there is a need for me to just explain that for a moment. It may suit the members of the opposition, at least some parties, particularly the Congress, to say the economy, we had left it in a prime shape, our growth rate was this per capita. And I can always have several members from our side who speak, after all, you inherited a very good economy from Atal Bihari Bajpayee's time, and maybe your first five years you tried benefiting the people with that good uh, economy. But subsequently, and unfortunately after the global financial crisis, it was thorough mismanagement. All this can be said. Both sides can argue over them, but the fact is these are already sort of well analyzed, well written about, and they are out there in the public. It's not just for me to say it. We'll certainly say it because when we got the economy into 2014, when we, inherit, uh, when we inherited the economy, and soon after that, Honorable Prime Minister himself, a year later probably, went public to say, may not be the best time for me to get this out. He didn't at that time think whether he's going to come up with something later. But clearly the intention of why a white paper was not brought out was clearly stated by the Prime Minister himself. It would have certainly damaged the confidence the Indian citizens had in our own country, in its institutions, in the strength of its economy, in the strength of the institutions which have to serve the economy and so on. So he didn't one want to shatter the confidence of the people. After all, he, they blessed him to come and serve the country. We all saw him evocatively uh, uh, bowing his head at the entrance of the parliament saying, I've come here as a servant of the people. I've come here to serve the country. There's no good crying afterwards saying, oh, the economy is really bad. I've come here, but I'm sorry. That wouldn't have been in the spirit of the things. So he very clearly said, I'm sorry, there is a lot of suggestion, but I'm not doing it in national interest because if I put it all threadbare, it will affect the confidence of the institutions, the investors, and the people at large. So that has been explained. Now, why now? Because, as I said earlier, 10 years of toiling to get the economy back on its rail, and again, I'll bring in this parallel, we have operated in the last 10 years on two rails, like a railway uh, rail which moves from one destination to another, on two rails. One, to correct the economy, remove the malpractices which had happened earlier, remove all those instruments which can be used as a weapon uh, for rent-seeking. So clear all those archaic laws and rules which have been there, make ease of doing business primary uh, concern, and so on, equally looking at futuristic reforms which were so important. And I'm sure for all the respect that all of us have voiced, and I was glad to hear, across uh, party lines, we had had such a wonderful farewell given to Dr. Manmohan Singh, I'll join in it. But equally, it is important, whether it is post-1991, 
or after 2004, the 10 years. The promised reforms of the 1991 itself was not complete at that time. Subsequently, when there was an opportunity again between 2004 and 2014, no reforms. It's one thing to continuously tell us, what have you done, what have you done? The two-track approach, which is required for the train to go forward, one which is going to remove the malpractices impact on the economy, and two, not only carry forward those pending reforms which have been waiting from 91, but also even further to take the economy forward. So that is the track which we laid for ourselves, and there we go, we have reached a stage where the economy can now say, we've reached fifth position, we'll reach the third in the, soon, so, uh, in the coming years. And that is where I want to compare it. There is a proverb sub in Tamil, and I'm sure every one of our languages, which is very rich, our languages are so rich in metaphor, rich in idiom, rich in the local context, and so on. In Tamil, there is a proverb. Mullumayada pota tuni madri. Meaning, there is a bunch of thorny bushes. And in that, a sari or a cloth falls. How would you extricate that cloth from it? You'll have to remove it from every thorn which is pricking on the cloth. And then to remove the cloth without any damage, how much of a delicate, literally toil will it be? So that the cloth comes out clean, the cloth comes out without getting torn, and then put it on an even keel. The economy was like that piece of cloth on a thorny bush. That thorn, the bush was full of all those malpractices which have torn into the economy. That is exactly how the economy was. And there is no exaggeration. This is very evocative, an example that, or, or a word, uh, idiom that I'm using. But actually, that was it. And that's what has gotten captured. Otherwise, why me, Mullupeda Putta Tuni? What was the idiom or what was the phrase which the whole world was using for us? Fragile five. That's not what I'm calling it. World called you like that at 2014. World called all of us. You are in an economy which is fragile. And if you are fragile, where, where, how, what is the level of fragility? From the bottom, you are within the first five. If that is the halat of the economy that Prime Minister Modi and this government inherited, did we sit watching, say, oh, you know, uh, wondering how to sort it out? Straight away we got into action. That was why the first cabinet decision in 2014 was one to form an SIT to remove the black money. And second was an expenditure reform commission which was formed, committee which was formed under Bimal Jalanji just so that all the profligate expenditure of the earlier government could be rationalized, more systematic and answerable methods of doing the, uh, governance will be put in place. Those were the first two decisions of this government, clearly stating the intent with which we are getting on the job of cleaning the economy and giving it new lease of life. And as a result, today I'm happy to say that we've reached where we have reached, and at this stage, as an elected government, we have every duty to inform the public of this country to these two august houses, Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha, where people's representatives are seated so that they know the true picture. What was it then? Comparable time? What is it now? And what effort it took for us to restore it? Mullu meda portatuni. I repeat it, that mind picture about our economy and the way in which it had to be delicately removed from those thorny bushes. Do legislation, do correction in the rules. Also make sure that you're giving enough incentives where, the, where it has to go in the right place. Savings by using technology. Not one thing, sir, and not at one level, sir. Across the board, at various levels, the economy had to be restored. So, today when we are bringing the white paper, it is because, as I said, we have brought the economy to a certain level, and that level gives us the confidence that we are able to now say within the next few years, and that is why Honorable Prime Minister keeps saying, 
in my third term, surely the economy will reach uh, third rank. And this is not without reason. And above all, again, once again, why now? There should be a record for our posterity so that we know what happens when the intent and the governance is not transparent, when the intent is not good, when the transparency is not available in governance, what can happen to the economy, which should never be repeated. We need to have governance clean. We need to have governance which is accountable and not have governance which is through extra-constitutional bodies. So, as I said, in the Lok Sabha, I had spent some time explaining through various uh, items which are part of the white paper, coal scam, how the banks went to, uh, into a big uh, mess and how that was brought back. I had explained it all. I do not want to spend too much time going into one more or a third more or fourth more in the list of uh, items which we have mentioned in the white paper, but I'm talking about the overall project implementation and the speed which with, with which these schemes were implemented, and that itself is one classic example of everybody was going about their own in the government, and Honorable Dr. Manmohan Singh was not able to get them all together to give that collective synergy. As a result, projects were delayed, project became uh, over, meaning they were running into uh, excess cost because delay, delay in the projects, and that excess cost already being given, still the projects were not getting completed. Our honorable member from Assam spoke about how Bogibil Bridge was sanctioned in 1997, if I know right. The member may correct me. It took all these years for it to get completed. Yeah, yeah, I'm conscious of that. I'm conscious of that. Ten full years after that, you couldn't correct it. Now, don't point a finger at Vajpayee. We've corrected it now. Ten full years. Vajpayee comment didn't do. You could have done it. So, it's all right to go on interrupting to satisfy your bosses. But do have the patience to listen. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bosses, there will be some people reporting to your bosses, right? So, you can correct me for everything which is factual if I'm not saying right. But don't go on weakening a person standing here to tear their guts out to speak to you after you have been patiently heard out. Sir, project implementation, sir. Aadhaar, direct benefit transfer, Jan Aushadi Kendra, all of them they say it's ours, it's ours, acknowledge us, we were the one to bring it in and so on. Let me, let me highlight just Jan Aushadi Kendra. Middle class, the poor, all of them benefit when the medicines are available for lesser price. It, branded medicines have become so expensive that they can't do it. Jan Aushadi was started, started in 2008. Jan Aushadi Kendras was started in 2008. Who denies it? It's theirs. But where was it? 2008 they started. 2014, only 80, 80 Jan Aushadi Kendra have been established at that time. Which is six years after it was launched. 80 centers only. They go on talking about right to food, we established. We gave the right for information. Array, right for medicine, you also brought now. Why only eight in six years? 80 in six years? I just want to contrast this with what Honorable Prime Minister Modi has done. Sir, the number of Jan Aushadi Kendras reached 10,000 in December 2023. And Common citizens are benefiting out of medicines which are available at affordable prices. More than 1,800 medicines are available in these kendras, and that is helping the poor and the middle class to obtain medicines affordably. So not only Bogi Beel Bridge, which got completed in time, Pavitra, our uh, MP, was speaking about it. 
second railway station in the Northeast in all our independent India's history. A second railway station in the Northeast happens when Prime Minister Modi comes in. After the first one, you forgot the Northeast. At least you remember that Dr. Manmohan Singh himself was from Assam. Udar thoda kaam karte. Wo bhi nahi kya. Visits nahi hua kisi ka bhi. Jate probably just, I, I don't want to deride anybody. It's important to assimilate with people and join in their rebelry also. Sirf unke saath gana, gana aur thoda communal dancing mein participate karna sirf kaafi nahi hai. Aage udar kaam bhi karna chahiye. Unke saath, unke saath mil jul kar rehna bhi chahiye, kaam bhi karna chahiye. Ho to nahi hua. Sir, program implementation. I like to state it here. PM Modi personally monitors programs and their progress through the Pragati video conference that he holds with the district level officers also saying how much progress is happening. If it's not happening, then a minister goes there, also follows it up. 43rd edition of Pragati, 300, up to the 43rd, 348 pending projects have, and their total cost is 17.36 lakh crores, have been reviewed, progress is happening, quickly they're all coming to a conclusion. This kind of an effort never happened earlier. The biggest problem, a person who is so closely associated with infrastructure development, openly said, and I quote him, sir, biggest problem of stalled projects appeared in the last two, three years of UPA government. This is a statement which reveals as to when it started showing up, the inefficiency, lack of decision making. In this period, sir, Infra projects, infrastructure projects, worth an estimated 18 lakh crores were stalled. Whether it is through environment ministry at that time or any other ministry through at that time, projects were stopped. So if this is about projects, sir, the other example of uh, one big example is the Eastern and Western Peripheral Exp Expressway, which was again approved during 2006 and they had more than six years to complete it, never got done. And it was in 2018, after Prime Minister Modi comes in, expressways were completed. Project completion came to a complete halt. So about inflation, repeatedly there are figures thrown at us. Inflation is this, inflation is that. I just want to highlight Inflation, because Vajpayee's government is also uh, often said, oh, Vajpayee was, all there, or was also there, that government didn't do anything. I want to tell you, sir. Inflation in the last year of Atal Bihari Vajpayee's government, NDA government, was below 4%. Was below 4%. I'm not very good in Hindi, but I'm tempted to use one saying. Good ko gobar karna. Am I right? Good ko gobar karna inke mastery hai, sir. 2014 mein, uh, 4 mein, jab NDA government Vajpai ji ka 4% below inflation ke saath aapke haath mein sopa, aapne usko kya kiya? Good ko gobar kar di. Ill-targeted, reckless fiscal policy, ill-targeted subsidies, wasteful expenditure, all done for political gains. End of the day, they also had their turn of inflation. Targeting inflation is just not trying to contain inflation, but supply-side measures also should be done simultaneously so that lack of enough supplies Will jack up price, you should contain that also. Now we have a group of ministers which are monitoring every week what is the supply of tuwar dal, how much of potatoes are in the market, onions will have to be imported, we'll import it, 
So inflation management also in, involves supply-side management. They had suffered from twin deficits. Sir. In 2013, 4.9% fiscal deficit and 4.8% current account deficit. So they continuously lived with this. The priority was not that. And I'm not saying all this. The most respected Dr. Manmohan Singh in 2013 in AICC session in Jaipur said handling inflation is a shortcoming of the UPA government. Dr. Manmohan Singh, not anywhere else in AICC session, not anywhere in some corner of the country in Jaipur, says handling inflation is a shortcoming of the UPA government. Iske baad, bar bar inflation ke upar, ya aapne kya kiya, humne acha kiya, humne acha, are, Dr. Manmohan Singh hi keh rahe bhai, Inflation management is a shortcoming of UPA government. Wo khud keh rahe, sir. So, average inflation under UPA, that is between 2004 and 2014, was 8.2%. Average retail inflation during UPA 2, which is 9 to 14, was over 10%. Double digit. So, double digit inflation occurred nine times from January 2012 to April 2014. Nine times it went beyond 10%. So inflation management ke upar hume gyan dete rete So the economic pain which the poor people had to face, please introspect before you accuse us. What are we doing, sir, to contain inflation? Strengthening buffer stock? making sure key food items are kept in the buffer and released to the market every now and then, open market operations, as easing out on imports, whether of, food, whether of um, uh, pulses or oil, edible oil. And somebody did refer to Bharat, Atta, Bharat, Dal. Yes, we had to make sure that wholesale we purchase, pack them in containers or bags, which are saleable in Mother Dairy or NAFED or some MarkFed kind of institutions. Therefore, when we did this, Bharat Atta, 27 rupees 50 pies per kg, already we have sold 2.37 lakh metric tons as of 28 January 2024, which means the subsidized, easily available Atta now is available for the common man in different places and they notice it and they bought and benefited from it. We have taken measures and as a result, subsidized Bharat Dal, 60 rupees per kg uh, bags and 55 rupees per kg if it is 30 kg bag. 2.97 lakh metric tons as of 31st January has already been sold, meaning poor people have already taken it from these various outlets. Onions are available at 25 rupees per kg, sir. And for that, 3.96 lakh metric tons have been already sold by 3rd February 2024. Only recently have we started Bharat rice being sold at 25, 29 rupees per kg. So I think even in the question hour, sir, I've gone into detail about how inflation has been managed. I don't want to elaborate on it. Much has been said also in the white paper. Sir, there are just one other thing. Uh, very senior member, respected uh, KC Venugopalji had raised a lot of issues. Uh, I just want to highlight the few information, which also some other people talked about government jobs. So I want to highlight the unemployment rate for graduates has declined from 17.2% in 2017-18 to 13.4% in 22-23. Unemployment rates for overall for everybody declining from 5.8% in 2018 to 2019. Now it's come down to 3.2% 22-23. So it's coming down. The PLI scheme also witnessed <coughs> Over 1.07 lakh crore of investment, leading to production of 8.7 lakh crores. Employment generation <coughs> through that is about 7 lakh. 
for individuals, 7 lakh individuals. Sir, the yearly net payroll additions to the EPFO, uh, till some time ago the minister was here, the net payroll additions to the EPFO more than tripled from 61 lakhs to 139 lakhs in 2022-23, sir. So, government jobs in particular, someone did raise that question. As many as 8 point, sorry, as many as 8,82,191 central government vacancies have been filled up. I think it was Tiruchi Shivaji, he was not, he's not here now, have been, have been filled up in the last nine years as compared to just six lakhs which was filled up during 2004 to 13. Regional recruitment boards gave government jobs of 4,30,592 youths between 2014 and 2023. Government launched the Rosegar Mela in October 22, as a result of which today 6.32 lakh people have already got the appointment letters in their hand. <laughs> 10 lakh central government jobs are being given through that. Sir, the, whenever we talk of inflation, there is this comparison, our period, your, our, your period. I have already sort of established that. One important fact, sir, despite collapse in crude oil prices, in the second half of financial year 9, financial year 10, full year, and financial year 11, the inflation was running in double digits, which is what I said. Crude oil prices were coming down, but that benefit was not being passed on to the common public. That's their policy. What is Prime Minister Modi's policy, sir? When crude oil prices were at one level, when they started coming down twice, once before Deepavali, 2022, and one, uh, 21, and 22, again, we reduced the prices of excise. Uh, as a result, the pump price of fuel came down. So the passing on to the common citizens is a very important criteria which UPA never followed. So specifically, questions about ED is being used, weaponized, CBI is being weaponized. I want to remind, there are several instances, but one instance of how CBI was misused against an honest officer, SBI chairman R.K. Talwar, was an honest person who was heading the bank. But because he refused to give loan to one of their favorites, recommended by the first family, CBA went to his house. He was compelled to resign from the post of chairman, and that is weaponizing. That was weaponizing CBI, nothing else. Here, when we've given independence to ED, and they go searching, and the accusation is, oh, they do it only with opposition leaders. I want to say, first of all, whether through CBI or ED, where the money laundering element comes, they want the money laundering to happen so that uh, through the back door they can benefit out of it. So ED and CBI did not follow on PMLA cases because that was important for them. That operation should keep going on. If it is stopped using PMLA, money will not come to them, to come to them in the form of kickbacks. So ED was made to remain dormant. CBI did not pursue PMLA cases, and data proves it. During their time, sir, number of prosecution complaints filed were just 102 by ED. Whereas, when we have given them independence to contain black money, contain money laundering, the number of cases now filed are 1,200. And number of restitutions Amount that is restituted, which is taken away from the wrongdoer and given to banks or institutions like that, during their time was nil. They did not restitute even one rupee from the wrongdoer to the bank or to anybody else, whereas actual restitution during our period is 16,333.02 crores they have come back to the bank. Similarly, red corner notice, extradition, None of that has been done during their time. Everything is nil, 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 nil. Whereas what we have done 
is to issue red corner notice on 24 people and orders have already been passed to extradite Vijay Malaya, Nirav Modi and Sanjay Bandari, all of whom benefited through loans during their period. Their period they gave loans and these people ran away from the country. They did not take any action and when we came to power, we had to send notice, fight in the case and the orders for extraditing them has already been issued. So, KC Venugopalji had, uh, I can't see him here, but I'll still respond, said, tell me one scheme, one scheme that you have brought compared to our, you know, RTE, RTI, NFSA. Sir, I want to just give him one. Ha ha, more also. I want to highlight the fact, sir. I was immensely grateful immensely grateful to our member from Uttar Pradesh. I'm immensely grateful to our member from Uttar Pradesh, Vrajalalji. He spoke, sir, to tell you what exactly is the mindset. He's a policeman. Who is he? He's a former DGP. Oh, I better be careful then. <laughs> but still, he spoke total truth. No, no, uh, <laughs> I'm not... No, I what I meant was, DGPs have expertise on account of their training to know the mindset. Sir, he actually nailed the point so effectively. If we start looking at governance only from the point of view of entitlement and not empowerment, you can always quote saying right to food, right to education. It's all right. You did it very well. I appreciate that. But how many who have bought, again, tell me in the name of right to something, right to something. Vrajlalji actually highlighted where that empowerment should have happened, and it has happened under Modi, it has not happened earlier. What are they? For example, he recited from 1947 how a Dalit leader went to the then Pakistan, and then, then Pakistan, meaning the East and West Pakistan, was made law minister, came back, and realized this whole farce of, you know, Dalits don't get empowered, can be dispelled, and to dispel it, you need a leader like Prime Minister Modi. 47 till today, that approach of empowering Dalits has not happened. Empowering tribals hadn't happened. I'm giving that example based on also what Rajlalji highlighted. Dalit, tribal, Five of the sacred sites of Dr. Ambedkar have been bought and established and flourishing under Prime Minister Modi's time. They could contribute to Dr. B.R. Ambedkar only in one way. They feared people who would overshadow the first family, whether it is Dr. B.R. Ambedkar or Farmer leader Charan Singh ji or Shama Prasad Mukherjee ji, they, meant, they make sure that such leaders, Karpuri Thakur ji, they make sure that leaders who they perceive as being a threat to the first family, they undermine. They make them lose in elections. They come to insignificance. And when somebody else gives them the recognition, gives them the due honor, we, we cannot digest it. That's the story, sir. I'm thankful to our member, Rajlalji, to have brought that point back. Tribal leader today, a woman leader from Orissa, is occupying the highest position as president of India. And that is because Prime Minister Modi has given them. And Birsa Mundaji, who's Bhagwan for tribals, that day has been declared as a day for 
Samman of all the tribes. Why couldn't they do it during the time? No, they were believing only to keep them as vote banks. I'm giving you a few crumbs. You remain there, but give me vote. That's a story. Prime Minister Modi doesn't believe in that. He believes in empowering them, honoring them. And that is the similar treatment and recognition which was given to the Shahab Zadis, the two young children of the Guru who gave their lives to protect this country. So the approach is empower people, don't keep them under your thumb because you want their votes by throwing some few crumbs. No, that is the approach with which we've gone and therefore asking us, tell me what that one signature project that you've got, we brought right to education, right to farmers and everything else. But even when doing that, the so-called right to food act, even when doing that, they do one thing here, Internationally, they do things to undermine that thing here. If you're giving us right to food, how did you go to Bali in 2013 and give away the right for doing MSP-based procurement from farmers, keeping a buffer stock, releasing that through PDS? You gave it all away by signing the Bali Declaration in Indonesia in 2013. And here you're coming and telling us we've given right to uh, food? From 2017, sir, if only that <coughs> agreement and Delhi, that uh, Bali declaration were to be implemented, we wouldn't be able to procure one grain of rice from the farmers today. We wouldn't be able to have a ration shop today. We couldn't have given food grains from our buffer stock for the poor today. So one side you come and do a uh, right to a food, on the other, in the international platform, you go and sell away India's right to protect its farmers and protect its poor. So this is the hypocrisy. <coughs> and therefore, if you're going to ask me, what is the signature contribution? At least we have honestly made sure the poor get free food grains. They get houses. They get water in, the, in their houses. They get electricity. They get cooking gas. All this under Prime Minister Modi. So, sir, I don't want to... Um, further take more time, there are just one important issue on the not so glamorous side of reform. Because most of us look at a glamorous side. There are some work which have been done, which has resulted in good amount being saved. Otherwise, pilferages happened. And because of pilferages, the government was short of revenue. Now that we save it, we are able to do more projects for the poor. So we introduced, I, I did say that the expenditure reforms uh, committee was formed, and as a result, the budget cycle also was changed. State governments, because we presented budget at the end of February, state governments which used to present their budget in the month of February would not have the details of the center's budget details, and as a result, they were presenting budget on the, uh, you know, because we were presenting our budget in the end of February, they were just presenting something and trying to readjust. That got corrected because <coughs> budgets were started present, being presented on 1st February. States now are able to get an idea of what is coming to them and plan for themselves. That is one. Second, plan non-plan expenditure. By keeping that difference, you're constantly playing with discretionary allotments, which is what the pl Planning Commission earlier did with all the state governments. Such distinction is not even appropriate, as non-plan expenditures include maintenance of defense systems, social security, and pensions and insurance, and so on, even the subsidy for poor. So we have shifted the focus to holistic allocation on with by, uh, um, with bifurcation on revenue and capital expenditure. So these changes have resulted in states feeling a lot more empowered to plan their budget. Also, sir, Treasury single account. That's a system that we brought in, which influences how money goes to states for their schemes just in time. As resources are borrowed to finance the government's developmental agenda, the just-in-time release helps in saving interest costs 
and fostering transparency. Let me clearly say here, sir, Treasury single account system, which we brought, has given an estimated savings of 10,000 crores, and that is being used for bigger schemes and giving poor in return. The single nodal system, another reform, unglamorous, which we brought in, has given an estimated savings of 10,592 crores. Again, all these are going for Garib Kalyan. Sir, MSME, this is my last point. MSME, oh, after demonetization, all MSMEs have got wiped out. KC Venugopalji was saying, was feeling very concerned. All of us feel concerned about MSME. And he said because of that, that went away. All MSMEs are struggling. Many died. But I want to say here, sir, as on 4th December 2023, as per the Udyam registration portal, the total number of MSMEs registered in the country are 3.16 crores, including informal micro enterprises, which are in the assist platform. Again, early January, as per the Udyam registration portal, the total number of women-owned MSMEs was 1.17 crores. So MSMEs are getting registered even newly. Export of MSMEs in, in all India exports during the year 22-23 was 44 percent. Do you think it will happen in 22-23 if post-demonetization all MSMEs got wiped away? 40 percent, 44 percent of all India exports are happening through the MSMEs. So they should do some more homework rather than come with general observations which are getting disproved each time data is thrown at them. Sir, the efforts that we take are during the COVID itself, 5 lakh crore emergency credit line guarantee scheme for businesses were extended, which were used by a lot of MSMEs. And I'm telling you with great sense of pride that even as we come to the end of that period, many of them have honored their own loans returns and servicing the interest. Uh, this guarantee is not going to be used by most of those loans which were given. 50,000 crore equity infusion through MSME Self-Reliant India Fund has happened. We've done that for MSMEs. No global tenders in this country for procurement can happen up to 200 crores. They have to be reserved for MSMEs. No global tenders. Similarly, sir, launching an online portal champions in June 2020 to cover many aspects of e-governance so that they can be made easy. Uh, inclusion. When we think of MSMEs, we think of only manufacturing. But what we've done is also to bring in small traders onto this. Retail and wholesale traders are also now recognized as MSMEs. They can get all the benefit. Non-tax uh, non benefits have been extended for three years in case of an upward change in status of MSME. Rollout of racing and accelerating <coughs> MSME performance program with an outlay of 6,000 crores over five years. And lastly, sir, the Udyam Assist Platform, which, is, which was launched in uh, 23 to bring informal micro-enterprises under the formal ab ambit to avail priority sector lending has also been done. So MSME can now take the money which is coming under the priority sector lending um, Umbrella. So lastly, I was a bit appalled. Madam, this is second lastly. Did I say one lastly? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, second lastly. I'm sorry, sir. I'll correct myself. Sir, who made Charan Singh PM? Was an observation by KC Venugopalji. People make PMs. I hope the Congress party is not living in that thing. They make PM, they throw PM, they bring in PM, they reject PM. No. People have rejected the Congress. But if you uh, you are well aware of that uh, politics of that time, sir. Indira Congress decided to extend support to Chaudhary Charan Singh, who took oath as Prime Minister on 28th July 1979. 
Within 24 days, he resigns. Why? Because Indira Gandhi's Congress withdrew support from him. Charan Singh said he resigned because he was not ready to be blackmailed into withdrawing cases against Indira Gandhi. Indira Gandhi cases which were uh, put on her post-emergency. Indira Gandhi ji wanted Charan Singh to withdraw certain cases against her relating to the excesses committed during emergency, and he refused. Charan Singh ji said, while, resign, re, while resigning, and I quote, the country would not have for, forgiven us if we had, for the sake of remaining in office, agreed to withdraw prosecutions against persons responsible for atrocities during emergency, unquote. That's the honor with which that person left from there. The Chaudhary Charan Singh ji had to leave because he didn't think he should yield to that blackmail. So it was the Congress party which brought down Chaudhary Charan Singh ji in 1979. Good that KC Venugopal ji brought that up. It's all right for them to now say, it's all right you go away to his grandson, but the fact remains they had no respect for Chaudhary Charan Singh ji. This is the way they blackmailed him. An honorable man that he was, he said, no, I'm not falling into this, and he went away. Similarly, today, I'm grateful that our government has honored P.V. Narsimaraoji. Many things can be said. 91 reform, if he wasn't the prime minister at that time, even an economist, Dr. Manmohan Singh, couldn't have performed what he did as a government. Congress party did not even have the gratefulness to recognize him even after his death. The, sh the pictures, the video, of the party's office, headquarters office, gate closing, even as his corpse was going, will bring tears to anybody's eyes. A person sacrifices and serves the party, but because of prejudice, you ignored him, even after his death. That is the gratefulness this party has shown. And I don't need to say that it is the party which gave, under their own prime ministers, the prime ministers gave themselves Bharat Ratna. Nehruji, Indraji, all gave themselves the Bharat Ratna. They didn't bother about others. And they certainly didn't bother about Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, who they constantly kept defeating in political fields. They didn't give the Bharat Ratna to him. And therefore, sir, this party should not shed crocodile tears or should not, for the record's sake, say, oh, no, no, we welcome Bharat Ratna being given for P.B. Narasimha P for Chaudhary Charan Singh Ji, and so on. They've proven when they were alive how torturous their lives were, how they tortured them. All that is, all that is very clear, and it will go on the records of the uh, parliament as to how, when they were alive, they tortured them, insulted them, and now when a different party, when Prime Minister Modi gives them Bharat Ratna, they are not even able to gulp the fact. Thank you very much.